How do you feel about a uh, public school for gays? High school. No, you don't like the idea. Who does? Think it's a good idea? Huh. Why? No, don't ask me why. <laughs> what is it? Don't ask me why. I, I think it's no. a very good idea. Because? Because I know in places, I mean, I think in New York City that gays can get along all right because there isn't that much prejudice, but in places like Queens, there are a lot of people who... Um, well, Queens is New York City, but I think <laughs> I know what you mean. Uh, Manhattan is more tolerant than Queens? Yeah, a lot more tolerant. Hmm. And uh, if you're a gay person in a high school, people will call you a faggot, make fun of you, maybe even physically harass. I think gays uh, should have their own schools because they pay taxes also. So let's have a, uh, let's have a school for blacks. Why not? We do already. <laughs> In essence, we're separate and unequal. For politically conservative students. What's wrong? To have a liberal high school. Where do we stop? We don't. And then you've got yourself a real fractured society. We do now. Not a bad point. Steve Ashkenazi joins us, director of clinical programs for the Institute for Protection of uh, Lesbian and Gay Youth. It's your, uh, your organization, in cooperation with the city of New York, established this school. We established the school, and I have to say that I think it's an unfortunate thing that there needs to be such a school. I would rather there not be a need. I don't think that segregated schools are a good idea either. At the Institute, where we counsel uh, young people who are lesbian and gay with all sorts of problems, we saw the need continually. We saw young people who were coming to us who had dropped out of school, been discharged from schools, pushed out of schools because they were being humiliated, they were being beaten up. They had such a terrible time in school that the whole idea of going to school just turned them off. I sense uh, this audience appears to be against your idea. Uh, does that surprise you? No, it doesn't surprise me because I think that the, the facts in the case are not very well understood and I hope that we can clear up some of the issues while we're here today. Louis Fiol is 18 years old. You are a gay teen and you went to public high school. Did you in the city? No, I was in Long Island. On Long Island. How'd it go? <laughs> a lot of harassment. The, uh, as a matter of fact, the word on the students at this school, that number 20, we should say Louis is not a member, is not no, a, no, a, no. A, a student at this school. Louis is someone who, through the institute, was able to get back into school. Right. You know, we have been accused recently of segregating gay kids out of school and as I said earlier that's not our intention. Lewis is a perfect example of a youngster who came to us who needed to get back to school and through our counseling was able to get back into a mainstream alternative high school program that wasn't a segregated right. gay program. This new school has 20 students uh, and only one teacher so it's, it's, it's a stretching it to call it a school. It's a program of the right. Board of Education. It's, it's a, a start. Classroom. We, have six, we have 14 males and 6 uh, women, young women. That's right. Uh, the word, according to the New York Times article, was that the males were especially effeminate, meaning they're uh, visibly effeminate. Uh, and that made life for them in the mainstream difficult. Would you agree with that characterization? I think it might be an exaggeration. Also, the press never really saw the students, although they tried to, and we've been trying to protect the students. And the, the, I think the press has, for the most part, handled this very badly. Uh, a lot of the students are very intimidated. I must say some of them cried. It, trying yeah. to keep the, the press away from photographing the students who definitely did not want the pictures in the paper. Right. They would I not accommodate our invitations to appear on the program. I'm an educator. For that reason, they feel the media is, here yeah. we go, another gay issue, and media sells papers with this. Is that it? That's, I, I'm afraid that's the truth. I'm in education for 10 years in special ed, and I have crippled kids, and I have mentally with wheelchairs, and they are pushed into mainstream, and they are made to fit into the regular high school, so they're not isolated, so it's not inevitable that, that when they get jobs, then they're dumped into society with harassment. Yeah. What about my kids who've had to go with their crutches up three flights and been laughed uh, at? But as, as I don't have to tell you, the expert, you're in this uh, work. Uh, many parents of uh, children who have special needs want the mainstream. Yes, mine do. They don't want the isolation. They want the child to learn how to handle this harassment. So you're, you're, you're running against that uh, pressure, that uh, if we take gays out of the mainstream, then that just makes life even more complicated for them on the occasion of their being returned Why to a society to which may or? not be altogether welcoming. Mr. Kramer, sir. You are Larry Kramer, and your uh, play about AIDS is currently running. It's titled The Normal Heart, and it's uh, at Public Theater here in New York City. 
You're a member of the Yale class of 57. That's my year, Mr. Kramer. Um, We're you also wrote a novel that. titled Faggots. Uh, as distracting as that word is, that's the... Uh, Yes, well, I mean, to, to answer Lu to your question of Lewis, what difference does it make if a gay kid is openly gay in a school or not? He feels the rejection of the other kids because kids are always making these kind of remarks. I mean, if everyone thinks you're straight, they're more even more likely to make anti-gay remarks in work, in school, whatever. Uh, I... What? What's the matter? <laughs> Go ahead, Larry. I have to wonder where you stop separating children because they're different. You're taking a teenager and you're saying, all right, you have a problem dealing with this because you're gay. We'll put you in a special high school. You get, you get black students, like you said. You Short kids, tall kids, yeah. tall girls. A school for tall girls where people don't laugh at. And then you're saying... I realize that homophobia is a big problem and it's hard to deal with, but I think that if you take the gays out of the schools, how are people ever going to learn to deal with homophobia? Well, sometimes the school serves to help people get back into the mainstream. Since the school has been set up, two youngsters through the school have gotten back into the mainstream school after being helped with the problems that they were uh, suffering from before. We're but not what about talking what? about a national trend here. We're talking about 20 kids who were yeah. dropouts, yes. who have the same kind of problems that young pregnant teenage mothers have, where there's a school for them, a special school for them. Kids on drug problems, there's special counseling for them. We are talking about a counseling program. We're not talking about your average homosexual kid who is going to have his, his certain problems in his school, but who's going to stay in the school.